My name is Rick Overy. Welcome to the Waynesburg Economic Development Roundtable. We've been online for almost a year now, um, but we are very glad that you've chosen to join us today and very excited to engage in the conversation with William and Mary about how we can attract and retain the outstanding uh, student body and the resources that they have in our community. This session is being recorded. You can call in for audio or you can view it at your convenience. We have over 25 people who are registered for the call today, and we're really glad, uh, again, that you've chosen to join us. As chair of the EDA and host of the roundtable, uh, we're going to begin our, with our speaker in just a few minutes, and then we'll follow with an EDA moment from Michelle DeWitt, who is our uh, economic development director for the city. We anticipate that the whole program will last about 30 to 40 minutes, and uh, we'll have questions from the audience at the end of the session. We have two speakers with us today. And I'm having technical difficulty, so bear with me one second. We have Kathleen Powell, who is the Vice President at William & Mary. And we also have uh, Renard, who is with us. Uh, he is the Director of Employer Engagement and Programming for William & Mary's Cohen Center. Uh, they're both uh, very active at William & Mary. Uh, Kathleen has held positions at five different liberal arts universities across Ohio, and she is uh, at William Mary responsible for career development and engagement. And Renard, as a native of Jackson, uh, Tennessee, graduate of the University of Memphis and a Bachelor of Arts in Criminology and Criminal Justice, uh, and a Master's of Science in Management. And he's currently working on his doctorate at the uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Uh, he has also been very involved in uh, regional leadership uh, with uh, the Council of Advanced advancement and support of education and um, multiple positions in leadership there. He's directly responsible for outreach to employers and uh, working with employers to engage at the college. So we're looking forward to both of your presentations. Uh, we thank you so much for uh, your being with us today. Uh, we're hoping that you can help us leap over the brick wall uh, at the college and uh, understand our, with our business owners how we can access the resources, the labor pool that we have at the college, and also how we can continue to uh, keep that talent in Williamsburg and engaged in our business community. So thank you both for being with us. Um, we look forward to your presentation. Great. Um, well, thank you, Rick. We appreciate the introductions. And um, just full disclosure, I am on the struggle bus today um, with technology. It's one tribe one day at William and Mary, and uh, I tried to launch um, a mail merge through my email to get folks to think about giving on this day, and um, my computer just doesn't like it. So um, I am going to try and share my screen and then find my presentation. And um, I can do that, except I tried to save it and send it to Renard, so that's part of the problem. So let me go back, and I appreciate well, We're all that. struggling today, so we'll be patient <laughs> with you. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, so funny. Not really, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, all right, so here we are, and ta-da. I'll click share, and can you all see that? Well, I can't see you, so somebody just, has to give me a thumbs up. I want to. You just need to do a, a PowerPoint view or slideshow view. Oh gosh! So look what I've done. Not to worry. You just got a preview. Ta-da! Okay. All right. So as Rick said, um, uh, I have had the opportunity to work at uh, multiple uh, institutions, and I am so pleased to be at William and Mary, and I am completing my seventh year here. And um, I am professionally practiced, as you saw from my bio, and have had the pleasure of uh, serving the Williamsburg community for some time. And as Rick said, Renard um, hails from Tennessee, 
and has been um, with Cohen. Uh, Renard, you started, uh, and he did a virtual search, moved to Williamsburg, um, sight unseen. So um, Renard, I don't know if there's any other comments that you would like to make there. No, I think, you know, you, you and Rick have done a great job. I'm excited <laughs> to be um, here today and to talk more about the Cohen Career Center and um, look forward to um, engaging with some questions later on. Great, same, same. So in our time together, um, just want to talk about who we are as the Cohen Career Center, what we do, and how we partner with our business community. Um, so who we are. So this is our mission statement. You will find it on our website, um, but we partner with our students and our alumni, and it's important to us that our students are engaging with our services and programs. Um, we can't make students apply for jobs. We can't make them, um, you know, relocate or stay in Williamsburg, but we do our best to give them opportunities. Um, and when I think about, um, you know, Rick, your comment about um, scaling the brick wall, I think about one tribe and one community and ways to engage our students through ex externships and internships and full-time opportunities. Um, in terms of how we support our students um, and what we think about in terms of their skill sets, just so you all know that we are very keen with being a liberal arts institution, that it's important for us that our students understand what employers are looking for in their interns, externs, and new hires. So we partner with the National Association of Colleges and Employers. I am a past president of that national association. And we ask our employers on a yearly basis, what professional competencies are they looking for? And there are eight, and I won't read them, but you see them there on the screen. We share these out with our students. We share them out with our faculty. Um, we have created um, this infographic and we've distributed it to our academic departments and they actually put it on their um, bulletin boards in their offices and um, within their buildings. Um, being virtual uh, due to COVID, um, students aren't seeing this um, in those buildings, but we do have it prominently uh, placed within our, um, our virtual information that we have for them on the website. So as you're thinking about sourcing our students, um, sometimes you need a particular major. So it's like, I just need an accounting major to do tax or audit or whatever it is. Um, or if you're saying, oh, I need folks to understand finance and, and we understand that. But when you think about sourcing our students and our recent alumni or graduates, um, do keep in mind that they're bringing a skill set to the table and they want to meet your specific needs. Um, but we tell our students that they're not defined by their major. And one of the campaigns, if um, when COVID is over and you're able to walk around campus and be back on campus, you'll see our ampersand campaign and um, it's the and of our students. So they, a student could be a philosophy major and they're going into investment banking or they could be a biology major and they're thinking about marketing. So um, I just put that out there for you to keep in mind as you're thinking about how you are sourcing our students. So, um, you know, who we are. So just so you know, um, we are the Cohen Career Center and we serve all undergraduates, including um, business graduates, undergraduates. Then we serve the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, so VIMS. We also serve the um, arts and sciences graduate students, and we serve the School of Education graduate students. So our portfolio has about, um, excluding law and MBA, about um, uh, 720 students. Within our office, we are divided by industry. So we have a STEM career person, we have a creative career person, a business person, um, I don't I say person, but in terms of our industry. So we have advisors who are aligned to those specific industries. So government, nonprofit, um, public service, and education. We have someone aligned to internships, we have someone aligned to early career engagement. And when our students are coming to us, regardless of their major, they have someone that they connect to. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're trying to source our, our students, whether it's undergrad, grad, or alumni, Renard is your go-to person. So he's the one that you want to speak to. So in terms of what we do, um, we help with internships, externships, um, full-time opportunities, on-campus recruiting. We have many, many career fairs. Of course, everything went virtual this, um, this year. 
and um, continuing on with that in the fall. Um, but we're always looking for our community partners to help with mock interviews and resume reviews. So there's ways for you to connect with our students to get a flavor of what they're like. And then if you like what you see, um, then you have the opportunity to think about how, um, how you might hire them. And then in terms of how we partner, I am going to stop talking and um, I'm going to turn it over to Renard and he's going to share a little bit more about um, how he works with our employers. And thank you, Kathleen. So, you know, picking up on the employer um, perspective. So a couple of um, resources that we have for our students to help them prepare for uh, virtual or for interviews. I was thinking virtual because our students have done those the past year, but, um, you know, one uh, resource that they have is Tribe Careers, and that's a platform that we use in our office that allows employers and students to uh, research and, and define opportunities. So an employer will use Tribe Careers to post an internship, an externship, um, a part-time job or a full-time job, but then the student will have access to be able to see that. So that's a really nice um, benefit for our community partners because sometimes they'll mention to us, hey, I don't have, you know, a, a particular job board or I don't have a way in which to advertise this uh, opportunity for students. So it allows us to do that. And then we also post on there, even if people have websites that students can apply for, because then it advertises it for the students and the students can then go to your website. So it's a really robust uh, platform that we use um, to really funnel all of our uh, data management for our office and for students to really look at those opportunities. Another resource on the screen is Parker Dewey. And Parker Dewey allows organizations to post those short time professional projects, which we call micro internships. So for an example, um, someone may reach out to us or an alum may say, I have this short term project that I need someone to commit to about 20 to 30 hours. And we're looking to maybe uh, enhance our social media platform or we're looking to maybe develop some uh, brochures for our company. And it's just a project that's gonna take a few um, hours, but we want someone to do that and we'll pay them for that. Um, and so that's what Parker Dewey comes in. So it allows uh, an organization to post those micro internships for a student and a student can then go and look at that. And then they have resources available to help you with it. So they have a team um, that really uh, helps you with posting that information and to make sure that all your paperwork is um, done correctly. And so that's a nice benefit that we just recently added that we're excited for for our students. And so that really allows them to get some experience um, without maybe having to uh, commit to like an entire um, semester. So sometimes what happens is a student may say, I want you know, some experience in marketing, but I realize it may be a little late for me or I already have an internship, but I do want to do an additional project. So students are always keen on doing those as well. And then another uh, resource that I have on there is Big Interview. And so that was something that we had pre-pandemic, um, but it's something that our students have really been able to take advantage of, given that we've been operating in a, in a virtual world. So Big Interview allows students to review um, in informative videos on the different types of interviews and interviewers. And so students can look at those, um, say for example, behavioral interviews or that question where it says, you know, tell me about yourself. Um, so they can actually go on the platform. Um, they have a person who's pre-recorded a question and the student can then respond to that question and practice that way. And then sometimes um, faculty members will use it to assign to students for a project in class. And then the faculty member or someone from our office can give uh, feedback to that student. And so that's been very beneficial for our students as well. As I said, uh, many employers um, switch to those virtual interviews. Um, and so it's been a way for them to practice that. And it's something that we had before the pandemic. So we were thankful that we had that resource. So going on to some of our uh, employer events. And so um, as Kathleen mentioned, we do host a, uh, a plethora of uh, events and the career fairs for our employers and students alike. And so one of those are career fairs. And so each semester we have um, a portfolio of career fairs that we offer. So in the fall, we have Meet the Firms, which is open to all of our students, but is predominantly participated by our um, business students. And so they come and, and network with different organizations, whether that's accounting, consulting, um, financial services, any of those that may be available to students. 
And then we also have, um, in the fall, we have our career and internship fair. We have our graduate and professional school fair as well. And so our career and internship fair is a way in which businesses can come and recruit students for internships or part-time or, or full-time jobs or um, for those needs. And then our graduate and professional school fairs for um, students who are interested in, in pursuing graduate schools or going maybe to medical school or anything to continue their education. And then in the spring, we have our career and internship fair again, which is the same um, platform or the same uh, purpose for what it is in the fall. So internships and full-time jobs. And then we also have our K-12 Education Recruitment Day, which is for our school districts and, and, and different schools, so they can come and recruit uh, students for those vacant positions. And so generally what happens is school districts uh, will set up an interview schedule and they interview students on there and they just really get some more interest into those students and students get to learn about them. And then if it's a, a good uh, interest and good fit for the students, they'll later go and apply for those positions. And then we also added the Career Diversity Expo to our portfolio for the spring as well. And so we did it this spring within hopes that it would be a, a traditional fall event. But that event allowed us to really bridge the gap for our employers and students. And so we've seen um, an increase in our students and employers really needing an avenue for our students to connect uh, for diversity opportunities. And so in the past, we had what we called our Career Diversity Brunch and students were able to network uh, before our career fair, but we realized that um, we wanted to have a standalone event for our students and employers. And so we implemented that this semester. And so, like I said, it would be a, an event that's in the fall, but we hosted it this spring to meet the needs of our students and employers. So those are our large events. And then we also have what we call OCR, or on-campus recruitment. And that's an opportunity for employers to come on campus um, of course, pre-pandemic to recruit students. And so uh, oftentimes in the fall after a career internship fair, employers will request on-campus recruiting schedules and they'll interview students for those vacant positions that they have. And so they come on campus, they set up a shop in our office and in our building, and they use our space to interview students. We also have information sessions where employers can uh, talk more about the organization and build their brand on campus. And so uh, students may want have more interest in learning about a particular organization and the employer will come in um, and do those information sessions. And sometimes those are virtual as well, just because it's more convenient for the students and employers. And then we also have alumni panels. And so sometimes students may have an interest in a particular industry or field. And so our alumni are always willing to come back and talk about their um, career trajectory and how they got there. And so it's an awesome opportunity for our students to get some real world um, experience and advice from those individuals. We also have meetups as well. And so an employer may say, or an organization may say, I just wanna kind of talk a little bit more about my organization, but in an informal way. And so I don't necessarily wanna host an information session, but I do want to just have an opportunity for students to talk with me and to me also share about our organization. So we'll have a meetup there that's generally um, organized by our industry advisors. And so it may align with one of those particular industries and then they can come and students can learn about that and the employer can share their experiences. We've seen coffee chats actually increase this semester as well with just really the pandemic and employers have learned that students are still seeking that one-to-one -one interaction with them. And so really being able to talk with them um, in an informal way, but to learn more about the organization. And so we've uh, seen an increase in those coffee chats and that's always an opportunity as well. And so essentially the employer sets a schedule in Tribe Careers, which is what I mentioned earlier, but they set a schedule in there and then students uh, sign up for different slots that they can talk to that employer or representative um, for 20 to 25 minutes. We also have tailgates and pre-night events. And so those are non-COVID events. And so um, we are fortunate that our office um, and building is right by our stadium. So our football stadium. And so um, in, in normal times, an employer can have a tailgate and students can kind of come and network with uh, different recruiters or the office staff and they can have refreshments um, and just really a time to network and to, to mingle. And then pre-night events are, is 
um, events that are generally before um, a major event that we may have, or it may be an office event that the office has said that, hey, we want to have this event on campus for students, and it's an opportunity for them to come learn more about our, our organization as well. So I know that was a lot, but those are really our major events that we offer um, and ways in which you can get involved with William & Mary students. And so, you know, we definitely hope that you would uh, take advantage of these opportunities to connect with our students. They're always um, eager to learn more about the opportunities that exist for them. So just a, a few more things to follow up on um, some comments that we, uh, Renard made. And, um, you know, I, I think of Renard as a conductor. He orchestrates opportunities to connect our students to our employers. And he mentioned Tribe Careers. So Tribe Careers is the platform where you can post free of charge any position, internship, externship, full-time opportunities in the system where students are actually looking for those opportunities in Tribe Careers. And when I think about the flow, if it helps you all, so let's say, um, you know, Rick, you've got an opportunity that you need to share. Um, you can actually go to our website. You can click on employers. You will see that it says hire a student, hire an intern, post a position. You actually click on post a position if that's what you're looking to do. It takes you to Tribe Careers. And if you don't have um, uh, uh, an account in Tribe Careers, we can help you create one. And then you actually can track your applications. You can track the student views. You can pull down your applications. So it's a way that you have access to the system 24 seven. Um, and then if you have good traction and you want to come on campus and do, um, well, after COVID, but if you wanna come on campus and do interviews, then we set you up in our, if you've not been to the Cohen Career Center, it is a beautiful standalone building. The second floor has 13 interview rooms. Um, we would schedule you one of those rooms. You would connect with our students, have your interviews, and then um, hopefully hire um, as many students as you need to fill that position. So we do follow EEOC guidelines um, and that we have to post our positions. So if you would say, um, you know, Rick, I, I'm just pulling on you because um, uh, we know each other and um, you said, hey, Kathleen, I need your best and brightest student to fill this position and I need to fill it today. Um, I don't know all of our best and brightest students, although we have many of them. So the best uh, line of defense is to actually post that position. Um, we can alert our students through our different um, avenues of uh, newsletters and um, news blasts, job blasts that we send. So we have some different avenues, but we do have to follow those guidelines and to post that position. Um, we can work with turnaround time, so just so you know that. But again, we want you to know that we see this relationship as a partnership and that we want to know what's working well and what's not working. And um, at this time, I think that Renard and I would like to open it up for any questions. Um, let me just go to my last slide. Um, and I think this deck, uh, if you, um, uh, Joanna, if you wanna share this with anyone that's on the call today, that's not a problem. Um, so Renard's contact information is there. Uh, Taylor Alauhau, that is his uh, assistant director. Um, so if, if uh, Renard uh, isn't available, Taylor can step in and then I'm always here to help uh, to answer any questions. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to um, open it up to questions. And I know we've got another speaker, so I don't want to, um, you know, interrupt that that time. But if anyone has any questions or comments, um, we're, Renard and I are happy to take those. Well, thank you. This is a great overview of uh, how to get access uh, to the students. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that our businesses face. Uh, so having a point of contact, um, and I understand that you can set us up with a login so that we could post positions, which is very helpful. Could you just describe briefly um, an example, maybe not using the business's name, but, but one that's worked really well, and then maybe an example of what hasn't worked well uh, in terms of accessing the various resources that you've um, showed to us? Yes. Um, um, so keeping the name uh, 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 not disclosed to protect the innocent, um, I can think of um, a, uh, a business here in town that has um, just done very well navigating tribe careers and coming in, posting positions, um, working, um, you know, previous to Renard, working um, with that person in terms of 
you know, looking at applications, um, you know, saying, oh, I, I don't have as many applications as I would like. And then we look at the student views and then we can actually reach back out to those students through our platform and say, you've looked at this position, the application deadline is closing. Um, you know, we do have late adopters from some of our students in terms of submitting their applications. Um, and it's just a little reminder that they need. And then, um, you know, again, this particular business has hired, um, I think in the last two years, this past year has been a little different, but in the last two years, I think five of our, um, five of our students, so that's worked very well. Um, I can think of another um, business in the community that hires our interns on a regular basis. And um, it's not just using tribe careers, but to your point, um, we have a science career expo, which um, we need to update our slide and that one's on me. So we do have a science career expo and they've actually attended the science career expo, uh, the very first one that we hosted. Then because of that, they did on-campus recruiting. And then because of that, um, they actually helped our STEM um, advisor, Don Snyder, um, with um, computer science night. So they've actually expanded their brand. And I will say that's another way um, that you can get name recognition out there for your organization um, is partnering with us, not just for recruiting, but um, if, you know, if we have our etiquette dinner and I need some folks to sit at a table to have an adult conversation with our students, um, you have a lovely meal that's on the Cohen Career Center, but you're also providing a service to those students and um, keeping them engaged and helping them with their etiquette as we go throughout the session. So that's one example that I'll give. Um, I would say fortunately for us, we have not had a situation working with any of the businesses in Williamsburg that have not gone well. Um, I think Renard does a very, very good job um, level setting expectations and just saying at the very beginning, this is how we can support you. This is what our um, guardrails are. If you're looking for something more than that, um, you know, if, if it's something that we can accomplish together, we want to do that. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's out of our control, you know, there's nothing that we can do. So I think um, working together closely and having those relationships um, are, is important. Um, I know uh, that I subscribed in the past, um, Mike Caldwell to attend um, the luncheons. And um, I know that was a value add for him and for our office. Um, so if you have ideas and then as you think about um, how you'd like to work with us, um, please bring those to, to, to us, to Renard, to me, and, um, you know, let's keep that, um, that good communication open and thinking about, again, how do we orchestrate those opportunities and be partners in the, in, in the situation. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, at this point, do we have any questions in the queue? And Yuri or Joanne, if you could call on them and open up mics if we have any. Yes, um, I'm calling on Ted. So hold on one second. All right, Ted, you should be able to speak. You can unmute yourself. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, so one question I have is for uh, students that are, are still looking for internships this summer, uh, what advice do you have for them? And, and what are you seeing in terms of uh, the hiring uh, companies uh, changing, you know, sort of post or trying to emerge from COVID? Or, are there more opportunities out there now? Yeah, so Ted, that's a very good question. So um, Lisa Randolph is our assistant director for um, experiential learning, and um, she does a phenomenal job reaching out to our students and then working with Renard, reaching out to our employers and um, letting them know that there are opportunities. Um, what we're seeing, um, the National Association of Colleges and Employers continues to do quick polls to find out what the employers are thinking, if they're going to stay remote, if they're going to stay hybrid, or if they just don't know. Um, and right now it looks like, um, Renard, keep me honest here from the last quick poll, but I think what I remember is that most employers are going to stay um, virtual and, and with some hybrid, depending on where they are geographically and what their state has allowed them to do. And then Ted, to the question of what we've been seeing with, um, with internship hiring, you know, we have been very fortunate that our students um, have really done a good job working with our office to find opportunities. And there were very few, I'll speak to last summer, there were very few organizations who reneged on their internship offers and for full time as well. I'm very, very few. Now, what we did see is some of those organizations actually kept, um, they did push out their start date. 
So if a student graduated in May and they would have started, you know, on June 1, they did push out those start dates um, into July and some into August and even some into September. So we did see a little bit of pivot in terms of start date, but again, William and Mary was very lucky um, that we did not have a lot of reneging on offers. The other thing I will share is that we really, really concentrated on supporting our students by making care calls um, to those who were still seeking and just letting them know what the resources were and how we could help them connect um, with our employers. And you know, the, the tribe is, is, is strong and, and, and goes deep. And we actually um, called on our alumni to support in a way that maybe they had not supported before in terms of the micro internships that Renard um, spoke to previously, and then just opening up their networks so these students could have, um, and recent alums could have opportunity. Uh, one more question. Can you hear me still? Yep. So uh, yeah. with uh, COVID, we've, we've seen with the student athletes the ability to, you know, complete a four-year degree and then come back another year for, uh, you know, working on a master's. Uh, are, are you able to market this to, uh, to the employers that we now have, you know, students looking for internships that have more experience, more education, uh, but maybe need some flexibility to work around their, uh, their uh, team uh, practice schedule during the yeah, summer? I think, yeah, good question, Ted. Yeah, so we have, again, we have been very fortunate um, having Renard in the saddle in, in terms of communications with our employers and um, setting up our students for success and letting those employers know that we, we have that opportunity for that summer, um, you know, that summer expanse. Um, and it's not only for our athletes, Ted, it's also for our students who are um, doing the gap year in terms of their or gap summer, I should say, that they're looking at um, you know, a one-year master's at William & Mary. So they've done their four-year degree undergrad here, and then they've um, decided to continue on either in the School of Education or, um, or in the Mason School of Business. So this idea of um, bringing uh, four years of experience to the table versus two or one, two, or three, because we do see that our students are starting to intern earlier um, than what we may have done um, when we were in school. So it's just been, um, you know, COVID is as terrible as it has been because it has been, it has been um, dramatic. Um, we are really seeing some wins on our side in terms of how we're working with employers and how they pivoted as well, right? So in terms of um, virtual on-campus recruiting, or virtual recru recruiting, our career fairs, our, our career chats, our coffee talks, they want to stay engaged and we're still finding ways to help them do that um, in a virtual world. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions, Yuri? There are no other questions at this time. Great. Um, Renard, is there anything that we can do as a business community uh, to support you in your efforts that you haven't already touched on? Uh, if you had a wish list of, of something that we could do that would help you in placing students and also keeping talent in Williamsburg, is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah, that's a great question, Rick. I think, you know, when you all have uh, open opportunities for students, whether that's, you know, internships or or part-time jobs or full-time jobs, do you think about us and reach out to me to let me know? Because um, we have recently started posting part-time jobs through Tribe Careers. And so sometimes students, you know, are looking for those opportunities to um, gain a little extra money. And so that's always helpful for us to know which um, resources are available for them. And then we also have students who are interested in internships. And, you know, it's a lot more convenient if they have them closer in this area because, you um, of the uh, closeness to campus. And so, you know, they can uh, engage in those a little bit better. So if you have, you know, opportunities where students can get engaged and you know, keep us in mind, we'd love to advertise those for students. Uh, over the last 22 years, I've had uh, a William Mary student almost every year uh, as an intern and they've done a phenomenal job. They always bring extra creativity and diligence to the workplace and they've added a lot to our business. So. I would encourage others to consider doing that if you haven't already and continue to work with this team. Well, thank you so much for your time. I hope this is the beginning of a dialogue, not 
uh, the end of a dialogue that we will really continue to focus on how to retain talent and use the students uh, to build our business community in Waynesburg. So thank you both for what you do every day, particularly this very difficult year where it's been hard to get people together and uh, everything's been uncertain. So we thank you for what you're doing on an ongoing basis and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. This has been a pleasure. At this point, I want to ask our economic development team for an update. They've been working hard throughout the last year. Uh, leading that effort is Economic Development Director Michelle DeWitt, and she's going to highlight some of the resources that are available and some of the success that we've had even during COVID. Michelle? I can't hear Michelle. I don't know if you all can hear me. Nope, totally my fault. <laughs> I'm here. Hello, everyone. Great to see you. As Rick mentioned, um, we've been busy the past year dealing with, with COVID relief and, and helping our businesses through that situation. I'm really proud of City Council and the EDA who have gotten more than $1.3 million into the hands of our businesses through hundreds of grants. So um, hats off to them for that. Also wanted to, as you see on the screen here, bring up um, two things that are they're coming up shortly. This afternoon at four o'clock, we are having a public input meeting to show some initial designs of our wayfinding signage. So we are undertaking new wayfinding signage um, to help people um, from the interstate into their destination to the city. So that that is, um, that is a fun but easy process through signage and through, of course, your smartphones. Um, and tonight's or this afternoon's public hearing is looking at some of the designs for that and getting input from from the public. If you're not available to join us at four o'clock, no worries. We will be recording that, that meeting and we will post it and we're going to have an online survey that you can take and provide your input into the designs as we move forward on that project. I'm gonna ask Joanna Scrabala to talk about the, the next item. Yes, um, so uh, uh, hopefully by now you have heard that um, the Williamsburg Area Arts Commission is holding its spring forum tomorrow uh, morning from 9.30 to 11.30. Um, it should be exciting. I mean, it, the, the topic is survive, revive, and thrive, how we emerge from the recent virtual past. Um, and there will be a keynote speaker, Ms. Ruby Lopez Harper. She's the Vice President of Equity and Local Arts Engagement for Americans for the Arts. Um, so we're very excited to hear her. And there will also be some discussion following that presentation, as well as an inter interactive portion with some of the um, Arts Commission grantees about some of the um, challenges and successes that um, came out of the 2020 pandemic. So we are looking forward to that. And there is still time to register. The um, link is up on the screen, williamsburgva.gov slash WAAC. So hope to see you there. Thank you, Joanna and Michelle uh, and Yuri, a great team that we have. Um, please reach out to them to see how they can help you continue to build your business. Personally, with a beautiful spring day like today, I feel like the, uh, the light is at the end of the tunnel that we will emerge as a community uh, better and stronger than we went into this. Um, and there are lots of people that are coming to our town. So I hope we're gonna have a bumper year this summer uh, with many people coming to all the attractions that we have in Williamsburg. We certainly have seen some of that this spring on Duke of Gloucester Street and around town. Uh, our next business roundtable webinar will be Tuesday, May 11th at noon, and we hope you'll join us again and also let others know, uh, please take care of yourself and others in our community and make it a great day to do business in Williamsburg. Thank you.